Right, welcome back guys. As you can see, I'm in the Bivy and we are in France. Um, probably looking a bit tired. Uh, literally traveled through the night, left the house at 12 o'clock last night or early hours of the morning. Um, got the earliest train we can and yeah, arrived at the lake at seven in the morning. It's now about eight. It's raining, so filming's gonna be a bit hard today. But um, yeah, got the bivy set up. Just about to uh, play some rods and think about where I'm fishing. But yeah, we're back at Lac Burel. I say we because I've got my brother down there, Joe, setting up. Um, my other brother is over in the far corner over here. And then Matt, who was with me last time we did uh, a vlog on this lake, is over the other side. Um, so yeah, home set up for now. We're here for five nights and five days. Uh, but yeah, it's a bit drizzly and rainy today. We've had a lot of rain, but the good thing is the water temperature is up. Um, and we've got a load of low pressure coming in today and tomorrow. Um, yeah, it's looking good. Full moon this week as well, so hopefully we can get some carp out, get some bites. The lake owner, Mark, has uh, had a couple of fish out. He's fishing down near the, the lodge down the other side. Um, obviously, it's all a bit rushed and a bit, a bit hectic at the moment, but just thought I'd do a piece to camera, give you a little update of what's going on. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a bit manic setting up and placing rods and obviously the rain's going to be getting heavier as the day goes on so i don't know how much filming we'll get done today it's going to be a case of just uh making home settling in getting the rods out um hopefully get a bite today or tonight and obviously i'll film that if we do but um yeah that's it for now i think let's get these rods out all right morning people um Cool. what 24 hours it's been. Um, a bit of an emotional roller coaster to be fair. <laughs> yesterday just completely out of it, had no sleep the night before. Um, so yesterday setting up in that rain and wind was hard work. Um, but yeah, it's all good, all good. Um, got the rods out, happy with where they are. So nothing happened for me last night. Um, my brother-in-law, Matt, over the other side had a 24 pound common, nice clean fish. Um, and my brother, Peter, in the corner, fishing in the margin, has just had a what it looks to be a mid 30. So we're gonna walk around there and uh, get some footage of that. So that's all good. But yeah, last night, um, just before it got dark, um, I moved my bivy three times yesterday just to try and get better like pegs in the ground. Ground's quite soft where I am and I've got like not much choice of where I can put it. So I found a better place, um, but yeah, it was all looking good. Uh, wind and rain started to calm down and then all of a sudden, typical France um, weather just fucking like, just came over moody again. And just, yeah, we had hail, thunder, um, lightning and that, and then, I don't know, the winds must have got up to 40, 50 mile an hour gusts beating across the lake. Um, we all took a run, we was all having a beer and then uh, yeah, run into the little shed up here for cover. And then yeah, I was checking on my bivy, checking on my bivy and then next minute I looked down and it's just blown, pretty much bent in half against the fence. So where my bivy was down here is now longer, no longer there or there. And then I bivvied up just here in between these trees and yeah, it just disappeared into this fence, bent up. Um, yeah, I wasn't happy to say the least. Once I realized the bivy was uh, shagged, I uh, lost my temper and uh, bent it up some more. So my bivy is now um, sitting under the, uh, not the side of my van, look. There's my bivy. Storm poles are bent. All the arms on it are bent. Yeah, the old tempest is gone. But yeah, luckily, 
not far away from my swim at all is this shed. So <laughs> uh, this is my uh, it's my new home for the for the rest of the trip. <laughs> it's pretty cushy though. Got a cool little setup in here. It's where Mark normally keeps all his nets and um, landing nets and everything for everyone. Keeps it all dry and protected. But yeah, we've moved some of them out and. Uh, I've got my little setup going on in here. So yeah, not the best start for me, but onwards and upwards. You saying boys? Pretty buzzing, ain't ya? First one in the net, first French fish for Pete. So well done, Matt, you caught one as well, didn't you? Yep. 24 pound. Mint common, it's all happening. All right, let's get these photos done. How big did she go, mate? 37, mate. 2 rods set after that little uh, bite we just had. Out of the blue on that uh, single rod that I left out on the spot. Um, I'll show you it in a bit. But yeah, basically just fishing. There's a big new like tree that's fallen in the lake down the bank. There's a bar that runs off of that, funny enough, to the corner of the island. So it's about five foot deep, so I found a nice spot on there. It's like a patrol route, I think, between the island and that new snag. Um, but there yesterday afternoon and she's got a yeah, 38 pound but absolutely buzzing so yeah, hands all shaky after catching that fish. <laughs> 
the ever faithful MG rig. He's been doing the bikes for my brother. He had his 30 on the MG rig. to report for today after that little flurry of bites this morning it's all gone a bit quiet a little bit of rain a little bit of sun and a little bit more wind but um it's all it's all quiet now all quite calm quite nice um but yeah no more carp to report um does feel and look good for it but it could just we're just trying to work out it's still early it's still early days really um, just trying to work out the bite times you know we had matt had one like one two in the morning uh, that little common and then my brother had one first light and then i had one just after his so it could be like a little bite bite period there early hours of the morning onwards um, and in the daytime it could be quite quiet so bit different to last time. I think last time me and Matt were here, last, last February, um, it was freezing at night. So we'd had no night bites. Um, and just had bites at uh, the daytime. So like from like 12 to three o'clock when the sun was out, we were catching, but this time seems pretty different. But yeah, just turn you around here. There's a little, uh, little spot I want to show you. new snag here it's fallen in the lake as you can see the trees falling in over the winter so yeah I mean I'd love to fish up to it but it's uh it's not been pruned or nothing or looked at so you don't know what's underwater there it's probably about eight foot deep where that tree's sitting with the stamp of fish that are in here you've got no chance fishing up against that so but there is a bar that runs out here in this open water here and kind of goes out towards the corner of the island there like I said before that's where I've caught that fish so what I'm doing is actually standing here with my marker rod nine wraps out towards the left hand side of that swim over there out here nine wraps um, pop the marker up it's about four and a half five foot deep nice and gravel like top of the bar and then from my swim I just boat over to the right hand side of that drop the rig and the bait nice little spread quite like quite put quite a bit of bait over that one as well kind of like a bait and weight that that rod but it's like it's they're definitely definitely holding in this snag but you just it's just too dangerous to fish too close to so you know, I'm only, what, two or three rod lengths off of it on that bar, but it's a good passing spot, I think, from the from the actual snag to the corner of the island. I feel like they're gonna come across that. When they're looking for food, they might sit in here in the daytime, but yeah, there's no food in there, so they're gonna come out and have a look for it. So it's a good passing ground. I'll be happy to catch one of one or two off that as the trip goes on. Ireland hasn't done any bites this time, not yet, which is a bit uh, strange. Normally they're the they're the rods that are doing all the all the bites, but my brother Joe, who's further down, he hasn't had any. Uh, a few liners and stuff, but he hasn't had any yet. And then uh, I haven't had any on the, on those rods. I'm sure they'll do something, we just got to, you know, it's still early days, just got to work it out. Yeah. Alright, so a little update. About one o'clock last night, I had a 26 common. And it was a little one, but it's the first part of the island for all of us. It's a good sign. Just going to redo the rig and everything now, change this hook. Might change a few things today on one of my rods. I get that I've had one out on that bar off that snag um, 
and one off the island now, but there's another one on the island that's not done a bite or done anything yet, so I might move or water that today. Uh, hopefully the sun comes out today and warms it up a bit, get them on that island a bit more. Um, yeah, that's it for now. Just changing my hooks to pre-sharpened continental mugger. Size four. They are absolutely razor sharp. If you haven't tried them, you need to get on them. Different gravy them. And yeah, like I say, we've got the Bake Works specials here. They create like a halo when they uh, break down on the on the bottom of the lake and yeah, it just tops with uh, one of the heavens. So yeah, we're gonna get this rod back out. So this is the bait mix that I've got going on. It's just loads of micro pellet in there. Crushed boily, that's the Korea Amino. We've got loads of maize in there. Sea stim, powder and the Korea Amino glug and oil soaked in there as well. We've got Korea Amino 12 mil boilies, all shelf life and a few, there's a few 15 mil in there but mainly 12s keep it it's all we're keeping the mix quite small rods ready rigs ready come on the carps right so this is on the other rod island rod same setup mg rig standard <laughs> continental mug up and yeah little dumbbell wafter tried on the bottom of the shelf on that, that this rod and it's not really working at the moment so I'm gonna go on top of that shelf for today hopefully that sun comes out at midday or a couple of hours and yeah they get up on that shelf and along that undercut bit of the island and this little bad boy will do a bite but yeah just gotta keep trying little things this time of year just to trick them up because they're not feeding heavily it's just Trying to put it in the right place for that quick bite. Just before this rod goes out, I will say, if you're using these continental muggers that are pre-sharpened, or even the uh, rigger chod hooks or anything, any any of the gardener pre-sharpened hooks, you need to get yourself some of the point shield just to protect. Where well, it's been sharpened, obviously that sitting out in the lake bed um, will go rusty. But if you put this stuff on it. It stops it going rusty, and keeps it sharp. It's about 10 o'clock now in the morning. Nothing else has happened this morning. It's been a quiet morning. Just that one last night for me. No one else has caught, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, like I say, the weathers have been a bit up and down. Um, I did mega storms the first day, the first night. And then since then, I think we've got this, it's blowing a southwesterly now, but it's really cold. It's not nice to stand in anyway. It's not a warm wind. So yeah, I don't know if that's playing a part. We're catching, we are catching, which is good, but it's not like there's a set time or set tactic at the moment that's like, you know, saying everyone should do this or, you know, this is the bite time. It just seems a bit random at the moment, so I'm just still trying to work it all out, get my head around it all. So I've put one on that dumbbell um, wafter. That's got, like pugged up tight to the islands, probably a foot off, not even that, six inches off, but it's like four foot deep there. So I don't know if it's like, it felt like a little, kind of like a little carp hole. I could stick my net pole probably two foot under the island which is pretty crazy. So it's definitely like a little rubbing spot or a carp hole there, because either side of it um, was a lot shallower. We keep trying, hopefully it happens. It's not all doom and gloom. We've, uh, we've had some bites and stuff. The only problem is my brother Joe's fishing next to me. He hasn't had a bite yet. He's the only one who hasn't caught yet. So a bit of pressure there to try catch him a fish. We're gonna move these rods now. Um, just one of them's on a really good spot that Matt caught the 60 from last year. So we're gonna keep that one on there. And then the other two we're gonna play around with, try to find a better spot on that island and one out to this bay on, the, on our, behind me there. 
if I get something going for him. Like I say, look, the sun is trying to come out. But yeah, we just need it to come out for a good couple of hours and I feel like there could be some daytime bites then. Right, while well, we've got a bit of low in the action, um, sitting here in my new carpet shed, <laughs> I thought I'd show you a few things new from Spiro that I've got my hands on. Uh, what have we got in here? Lead uh, pouches down here, these are pretty cool. A little one. Um, Old big one that you can fit both the pouches in. Hard to do this one handed, but we'll get there. There we go. So, yeah, got a big pouch there for the leads. Little one here. Day sessions, overnighters, long sessions. Two different sizes, keep it all together. Pretty cool. Um, what else we got? My main bags and that down there. I've seen all that now, I think. This is new. New cut loop pouch that I've got my hands on. Pretty cool. Got everything you need in there. Sugar, coffee, tea bags, all your plates and cutlery and stuff. And you can even, I think you can, yeah, you can fit a ridge monkey in here. Slots in there. Hang in. Hello me. Can't go wrong with a bit of hello me. We got <clears throat> oh this is a game changer this is a little uh, wash bag so you've got your deodorant wash bag you've got your wipes you've even got a little mirror there look <laughs> um, all my stuff in there clean your teeth and power set them all and all sorts but it's quite cool because you can hang it up in your bivy or something for long sessions or if you're doing overnight as like I do most of the year just put it in your van, have a little spruce up before you go to work. And that can just stay in the van hooked up. The essentials to keep clean, hygienic, you know. But yeah, that's it. New, new bits from Spiro I thought I'd show you. Put a bit of bait in, you never know. This, this, this part of the lake gets a nice bit of sun in the daytime also. Um, bit of wind's been trickling in there a bit and it's a nice little quiet area that you can imagine them just mooching up and down like I say it's quite a fairly deep margin here so I'll keep my eyes on it bait it up see what happens um, just trying to yeah do everything we can to get a bite um, you know the last two nights, there's been a bite at 1.30 at night, at like the earliest hours of, more, of the morning. So that's the only, you know, rhythm that we've got going at the moment. Um, Matt had one at 1.30 the night before. I had one at 1.30 last night. So that might be a little bit of a bite time. But all the other bites are a bit, bit like here, there and everywhere. So. And then today it's just died a death, just yeah, not seen anything, no bubbles, that cold wind's no good. We've still got, well, we've got tonight and then two more nights. So there's still plenty of time, there's loads of time to get some bites. And the weather is a bit changeable, so, you know, I know changeable weather's not always the best thing, but if it changes, and the carp seem to like it for whatever reason they could switch on and you could get a couple of bites like we did the other day and you know you could have a 60 pounder in your net. Joe's just throwing out one of his rods just before dark. Matt's giving him a hand. Just holding the rod and letting the line go out on the boat with Joe and then just dropping it rather than taking these big 12 foots out there. <laughs> Ideally, you want like six or nine foot rods with your bit. Having a little prod around, double checking the spot. Two handfuls of bait, job done. Presentation spot on. Just need, right. yeah, that's a bite in it. Just need the cart to play ball, mate. A few beers now, chill out, get the fire going, and uh, pray for some big hippos. 
have a quiet night, but I did manage one, um, and it was a bit earlier than the last, last couple of night bites. Um, I think I had the fish at about nine, half nine last night. Off that spot out on that bar, on it, out in like kind of open water, kind of a passing route towards that big snag that's fallen in. So that's two bites I've had off that now, the 38 and um, that little mirror last night that you'll see. Um, we've only had one off on the island since we've been here, which is mad. But they must, they're just, they're just not getting along that shelf for whatever reason. So I will, for the, for the whole trip, I will leave um, the island like banker rod if you if you like. I'd leave that on there um, just in case they you know decide to get on there. You know, I've had one bite off there, the 26, but the big girls just ain't getting on there at the moment. Yeah, that middle rod, which is out towards the island, needs to be moved somewhere today to just try, just to try something different. If I go towards the corner of the island, which is over my shoulder here, if I go towards that corner of the island, if you come short a little bit, it's, uh, it's about eight foot deep, probably nearer nine foot deep. Um, there's no gravel there, it's all a bit silty, but it is presentable. It's not thick, thick sill, it's just, yeah, for this lake quite silly because it is a gravel pit. All is good, we're catching. We've had three now. Two two twenties and a, a 38. Buzzing with the 38, but yeah, it'd be nice to get some of those big girls. I mean there's plenty of them in there. There's a good head of 40s and 50s. And then there's three over 60 now in here. So if one of us can slip up one of those big girls, it'd be fucking mega. But yeah, got two two spots that have done by it, so I'm gonna leave them. Um, I will show you in a minute when I put that rod back out on that on that sh on that bar that's done me two bites. I will show you that because that's quite cool. Show you how I'm placing that rig. Um, getting it accurate every time is key on a spot like that. So I'll show you that in a minute, get that rod's reset. Um, and then I'm just going to spend the day kind of, or the morning, thinking about what to do with this, this middle rod. And just before I put this rod out and get it all sorted, show you the setup that I'm using. I'm using the Gardner leg clips. That's in like a brown, uh, browny kind of gravelly colour to match this bottom. Got a three ounce lead there. It's like a heli lead. I prefer to use these without, with only just a single ring. Um, Good for distance fishing to be fair like that and also just keeps it nice and tidy like the way it sits obviously been catching on this mg rig um yeah honest uh honestly like super confident in this rig now a bit boring that i use the same rig all the time but that's just you know once you've got confidence in something and it keeps working you know i have no reason to change i do prefer using a waft or bottom bait rather than pop up so this is the type of fishing I do, mainly. Um, that's the Ultra Skin. Super soft, 25 pound silt. Gardener Mugger Hook, which is the Continental pre-sharpened hooks there. Got a ring swivel and everything there, putty. And this is the Camflex. Camflex leaders, I'm absolutely loving these at the moment. Fisheries that allow them is just, yeah, perfect. So that's the setup. Also, really enjoying using these rods at the moment. New rods that I've got hands on this week before I came out. They're the, they're the, the first original um, garden rods that they brought out. The GTDs, £3, six, I think they are, test curve. Yeah, they're lovely. Lovely to play fish on, lovely to cast. So, yeah, get in here, get these uh, hook baits on and sorted. Ah, got a little fire there for tonight, keep us warm. Yeah, looking good. Just made another little mix up. This time I'm not gonna put too much corn in it because it's making, the, making it go a bit too stodgy. So we've got Cree Amino, 15 mils, Cremino, 
12 mils and then a bit of, bit of fine pellet mainly the bulk of the mix is crushed boily uh, loads of crushed pre-amino in there keep them grubbing around and then topped with a little bit of Himalayan salt in there just make up my float there on the corner of the island there's seven and a half foot there and then it goes up again to like literally nothing so yeah in line with just off that tree there's a nice big deep gully and it's not gravel either which is nice because there's a lot of gravel in here don't mind a bit of gravel but that's like hard silt um, yeah so it feels like nice and clean nice and hard but probably more uh, better for the cart to be feeding on. They probably enjoy them sort of spots on this lake because there's so much gravel in here. So that's the plan. That middle rod's gonna now go on there. See if we can pick something out of that gully. Morning everyone. Me and Joe have uh, managed a couple of bites last night or the early hours, hours of this morning. It's 6.30, we've both had a take. Joe's got a lovely 37 pound seven and uh, I've got a 41. So we'll get those out soon, show you them. What are you saying, Joe? Buzzing, mate. Buzzing, mate. Off the... buzzing, right? Yeah, mate, hard work pays off. Finally got one for Joe, new PB for him as well. So yeah, everyone on the trip's caught now, so it's pressure off. Um, this one I caught last night was on a new spot. So finally got three rods rocking, a bit late in the trip, but uh, yeah, I've caught on every rod now. So one on the island, tight up, had that little common. Um, my main spot out there, just off that snag. And then I've got a new one out here, off the corner of this island. Now, I've just popped the marker back up because I'm going to put the rod out in a minute. Just out there on the corner. See the marker? Absolutely buzzing. I made up for my brother because, uh, yeah, he worked hard for that fish. And he's finally, uh, he's finally come good. So yeah, we're gonna, he's just making up some new bait. I'm gonna get my rig sorted out. And we'll get these, uh, get these rods out and get these fish out. Can't beat mornings like this. Cut the chunks in the net. Twins, didn't they? <laughs> they are. Nice three big scales of the tail of that one, look at that. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Happy with that. Let's work mega rods for that one. Yeah, boy. The view. How big is you, Joe? 37 power 7. New PB for Joe. This yeah. one went 40, 41 pound. Happy days, boys. That's what we're for, eh? Try yeah, and bring him a tag closer. fish absolutely buzzing with that made up um, yeah just so happy for my brother as well he's worked hard this week to get that bite and a new PB for him um, 
So yeah, happy days, 37 and a 41, not a bad morning. Um, slowly getting bigger, so hopefully one of these big, big girls come out. The weather's looking good over my shoulder. I'm just in my carpy tent because, or carpy tent, carpy shed, because it's raining at the moment, but the wind's died off and it's, it's really mild. So we've got 24 hours left. Yeah, keep working hard. Hopefully we can catch some more. Um, if we don't, it's been a good trip. We've had some good fish. Um, just be nice to finish on a big one. I don't care who catches it, just, yeah, be nice to get one of those real big girls out. Um, but like I said, there's still time. I've been, I've been prepping a little margin spot the last couple of days. Um, and I haven't filmed it yet, but I did see a fish show near it this morning, so yeah, there could be an opportunity there for like a bit of stalking today. If this rain dies down or if it starts fizzing up, I keep an eye on it. If it starts fizzing up, then I will go down there and uh, hopefully we can nick one out of there, out of this little gap in the trees. I've been uh, prepping with a bit of bait for the last 48 hours probably. Um, so yeah, that'd be cool if we can get that. Um, so yeah, all is good, all is good. Hopefully we can finish on a big, big girl. Yeah, while, uh, while we're just sitting here chilling and that, I thought I'd talk about what I've been up to since the last vlog. I went to Linea and did that little vlog and obviously on that I spoke about um, doing a little campaign on my syndicate. That hasn't really worked out. One, it's changing hands. The lake's been sold and it's all changing hands. And um, two, um, the lake's got a big, big inflow, like um inlet from a river and we've had a lot, a lot of rain. And uh, because of that, the, the water quality has just been down. It's just, it keeps flooding. Um, and it's just like chocolate. And when it goes like that, it just, it's really hard. Um, the fish just shut down. It's just, yeah, it's hard to get. But I mean, don't get me wrong, if it's gin clear in the first couple of days of that water coming in, they seem to have a feed up and get on it. But, yeah, it has fished, it is fished hard and fished slow. And uh, just, yeah, just kind of lost the buzz for the place a little bit when it's like that. I wanted to hit it hard, the main lake hard on zigs. Because um, there's a big deep zone out there and they love it out there uh, this time of year, like, you know, January, February. But, yeah, with the water, color, co um, water quality so bad, it's just, yeah, pissing in the wind really with the zig. So I haven't bothered with that. And then the back lake that I really wanted to catch a couple out of, um, it's just been really bad, like chocolatey and just fishing a bit hard and just, yeah, just haven't really um, had the buzz to get down there and really give it a go. Um, so yeah, I haven't really been out that much. Um, work's been really busy, which is good. Um, for me and my brother Joe, I work with my brother Joe, so we both do bathrooms and plumbing and everything. That's been really busy, so. It's good, but um, moving forward, I'm going to be down Medway Valley Way on uh, the Kent waters. I've had a ticket for a couple of years, but I haven't actually fished it that much um, because I've had another ticket. But now I'm like, yeah, I've kind of kind of finished on there for now. Um, I'm going to go get my head stuck into this this Kent pit. Um, it's not easy. It's not easy. You know, I know people on there that, you know, doing, having five, five bites in a year is, you're doing well, you know. Um, low stock, fish up to 40 pound. It's probably three or four forties in there at the moment, but they're mega old fish. Um, some of the old commons in there, even though they're only like mid twenties and low thirties, they're like the Redmire strain. There ain't many of them around anymore. Um, so yeah, we're going for them. Uh, it's actually some of the smaller ones that I really want, so uh, it's not all about the big ones on this water. Definitely not. Uh, there's a carp in there that they reckon is nearly 60 years old. Um, and when you look at it, you're just like, yeah, you can tell it's fish of a lifetime for some, like, if you're into that sort of thing, you know, those dark old scaly ones. is isn't actually that scaly, but dark old, like, got a story to tell that one. Um, got a friend on there that did really well last year. So I've been chatting to him a little bit, getting some inside uh, information and uh, yeah, hopefully 
all going well, I can get a few out of there and yeah, I'll get some footage of the fish on the bank if I do catch an in, obviously you guys will see that on the next vlog, wherever that may be. Um, so yeah, just a little update really. Obviously I plan to get out on that on my other syndicate this winter, but it just hasn't happened. So been a little bit quiet on the fish front for me, but that happens, you know, life and everything. Got I've got a baby boy and I've got a wife and I've got a busy, busy, busy job as well. So, you know, can't get out all the time, but do, do my best. Um, so yeah, that's a little update. Hopefully that Kent pit, I can get my you know teeth stuck into that this year and I'll be doing mainly overnighters in between work and everything. Um, and we can uh, catch some of those old Kent carp because they, uh, they're not, there's not many of them around nowadays. Right, so I've just walked down to that spot I said about earlier that I've been um, just trickling a bit of bait in, just under these trees here. And uh, yeah, there's a few bubbles coming up, so we'll see. One did show off these trees this morning, so got the rod down there. It's gonna be a bit hit and hold and I've got my waders on, so I'll have to go in if it does happen. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed we can get one from this snag. Well, I say snag, they're overhanging trees, but yeah, sit, sit here for an hour or so, see if we can nick an extra bite. Yeah, I just ran it down. I think my brother's got one. I think Matt's got one from that snag. Fucking run down and have a look. Oh. oh, what a chunk. Take me by surprise there. Catch one, How's that water? <laughs> it's alright, pretty cold, but <laughs> you need to end back up, didn't you? She's working, mate. You should have seen me jump in, boy. Yeah, I know. See your tread marks, mate. Oh, that's a chunk. That's a chunk. Yeah, fuck. Help us out, boy. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> right. Sort this one out. Get her on the mat. 39, 13, <laughs> yeah. 39, 14, 30. 39, 14. Yeah, yeah 39, yeah. 14. Yeah, just under. Just under, that's like margin. They all can't be 40, can they? <laughs> <laughs> right. Come on. That's it. Come on, get some water on that back quick. One pound, wouldn't it, Joey? Yep. It's over. Look at that. It's over. <sighs> Cheers, mate, boy. Come on, look at that. Absolute weapon. Put a mouth on it. It's a chunk, mate. She's not happy. It's a proper though. nice one, man. Come on. What a way to finish it off, mate. And to think this is the smaller one. Yeah. It's a joke. <sighs> Blown away, man. Get some steals of her now. I don't know what to say. I'll have to grab the back, Joe. 
Oh, I went light headed then. Eyes, look, that shows age. Right, let's try and wrestle this one. <clears throat> Come on, girl. Well behaved now. Proper fish, that mate. That's a chunk. Mate. Second part of a brace this morning. On the last morning, just to finish the trip for everyone and for me. 53 pound, new PB. Never caught a 50 pound mirror from France or England, so yeah, to have two in the morning, 104 pound brace. It's blown away. And yeah, just a trip of highs and lows. It's all come together on the last morning. <laughs> Yeah, getting quite emotional actually. Fucking <laughs> hell. <laughs> oh, no, it's good, mate. You deserved it, mate. Yeah. Fished well there. Let's do it with all my brothers here. Thanks to Mark for letting us out. <laughs> yeah, cheers, Mark. <laughs> cheers, mate. Cheers, Mark. Appreciate it. What a fish. Blown away. Oh, let's get it down. That's the one. Come what on, a boys. trip, boys. Come on. Happy That's days. It. We all fished well, we've all had bites. Again, thanks to Mark behind us. lacbriel has been good to us. Oh, look at that belly. <laughs> Let's get her back. Let's get her back. Get her back, boys. 53 pounds going. Get him where. Go on. <laughs> well done, mate. I don't want to kiss, I'm off. <laughs> yeah, well done, well get done. up. Well done, well done bruv.